Check this out. We're going Cape Buffalo hunting in Zimbabwe. The home of the world famous Victoria Falls and the mighty Zambezi River and a place where wildlife is thriving. Brought to you by Gunworks, the long range experience. The sustainable use conservation methods that the Zimbabwe government adheres to has created a perfect environment for all the diverse wildlife found there. The concept of the Zimbabwe Parks Department managing the vast national park system creates a protected buffer zone between the parks and the overpopulated villages that has worked very, very well for decades. So here's an easy way to visualize how that system works. Let's say this is the park and of course there's no hunting and no people are allowed to live there. Now they do have photographic safaris there, but they don't generate much income to the parks, but every little bit helps when it comes to conservation. Now surrounding the park is the hunting concessions where no people or domestic animals are allowed. Huge amounts of money are generated by taking a select fixed number of animals from these areas. The holders of these concessions maintain the roads, the infrastructure, and they keep illegal grazers and poachers out of the area by paying for armed patrols that make sure none of that goes on. Now outside the hunting concession, that's where the local people live by farming and raising domestic animals. Many of the local people also work for the hunting operators. There are very few jobs in these areas, so locals enjoy good wages, as well as receiving the meat from the animals that are harvested by the hunters. It's a win-win for wildlife and the hardworking local people. If not for these buffer zones, the reality is that the lands bordering the parks would be overrun by cattle, sheep and goats, and subsistence farms, and the wildlife would simply disappear due to overgrazing and massive poaching that would take place. And this sustainable use conservation model has been working for decades and continues to be the best system for protecting wildlife. This time our hunt in Zimbabwe was set up by Chaturunga Safaris. Finding Cape Buffalo in Zimbabwe isn't a problem. There are lots of buff in most of the hunting areas. However, finding the small groups that lend themselves to better filming of a buffalo hunt can be really, really tough. There's a cow in front of him now. To the left, there's another one walking towards us. There's a very big bull. Come here, come here, come here. There's a bull walking in the opening. There's a bull in that gap again. He's not wide. He's hard. I think he just moved to the left. Yeah, he did. There, the cow just moved to the left. Just focus on the one behind her. There's a calf just past him. His shoulder is open. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, no. To be honest with you, I prefer not to even bother with the big herds. It makes it hard to get in close to them. You have way too many eyes watching you as you're trying to do the sneaky sneak. And getting a clean shot at a bull can be extremely hard with that many animals milling about. Of course, if I'm going buff hunting, I must have the lovely Miss Shelley along to add to the fun. All right, we're getting down to last minute stuff here. We've been seeing buffalo. 
But the last herd we looked at had no bulls, if you can believe that. Big herd of Cape Buffalo. First time ever in my career that we've seen one that size. Seriously, a couple hundred buffalo, not one shooter in the bunch. So today, our goal is to find out where the bulls are that are supposed to be with that herd. So we'll see what happens, fingers crossed. It's only like 85 degrees right now at 6.30 in the morning, so it's really nice out. Because it's supposed to be like 110 here in a little while. So we can find the tracks first thing this morning. It's gonna be a lot better than it's gonna be at, let's say three o'clock this afternoon. Everybody ready? Yeah. Yep. The team is on board. Today is the day. Check this out, you guys. This is the marker between Zimbabwe and Botswana. Right now, I'm in Zimbabwe. Now, I'm in Botswana. And now, I'm coming back. So we've got tracks that have come across last night. They'd come down off this hill, and we think they went down to water, and then they came back up, and they've crossed up this hill. So we're gonna go on a walk and see if we can find them. I'm ready for a hike, how about you? Sounds good. Let's do it. Good. What the guys are saying is that this big herd that's out here, mm -hmm. they think they're going to go up into those hills, those kind of reddish hills, mm -hmm. and then they'll lay down in there this afternoon because, see, it's, it's hot now. And if they lay in there, they'll go in that shade for a while. But the problem is with these big herds is that if they get up there, this wind swirls around so much in those hills that we'll be, it'll be hard to get to them because just like up here, you get close, wind switches. You know, right now it's steady like this, but up there it's swirling around. And... Okay, Uncle Alan, what are we gonna do? The truck's in on that side. So we're gonna go back to the truck. We'll see if we can pick up on one or two of those smaller herds back there. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, then we know where these buffalo are. We'll come back for them in the afternoon. That sounds like a great plan. No sense in pushing them out of there. Yeah. So we can head towards the truck. At some point, you gotta find some shade and just take a break. You know, switch it up. The day snack is egg and bacon and sausage sandwich. Look at that. That is a African work of art right there. Is this the best sandwich ever? <laughs> and Steve actually made the sausage himself, which is incredible. This made it out of some wild beast, and I'm not really sure, and he's not telling us. We're just hoping it's not made out of honey badger. So we've been hoping for rain because it hasn't rained here all year. And it's decided to rain, which is great, except we're like 10 miles from camp. So everybody who's having a good time say, woo, woo, yeah, isn't this great? Yeah. <laughs> Africa, it's always changing. You never know what's gonna happen next. Next morning brought the promise of a new day. Yeah change in luck with the cameras rolling. We got up and got at him early and it didn't take long to find another herd 
and luckily this one was smaller and had several really good bowls in it. Just right there. Just right there. That's a... Oh, it's a younger one. It's a younger one. God, we got the wind perfect. Yeah. You just... That wind is nice. Plan A was to get in as close as we could so we could sort them all out, pick out the big one, boom, game over. Yep. Wind switched again. They're gone. Bye-bye. Good news is they didn't run too far, so we decided to get on their tracks and see if we could catch up to them again, maybe get a crack at them. See if we can go around like this. Maybe get on the side of it. Is it there? You see that next gap to the yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, he's moving into it now. There he stops, he's looking at us. Uh, you can go through. If you move to your left a little, you, you'll get a shot at that. Okay, okay, we're right clear there. That's him looking at us. You see him? Take him on the shoulder, he's gonna move. Really? The shot was good, but honestly, if you're just a few inches off on your shot placement on Cape Buffalo, you can be in for one long, hellish day. There, yep, I think he's done. Well, Alan, just make sure there. <laughs> he's done. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. That might, that might be the longest we've ever had to chase <laughs> a buffalo that I thought was dead on his feet on the first shot, huh? <laughs> the bullet's on that other side. But when, when he was out there and he started to move away from that tree, like, on the camera, they're probably going to see that they can see the head and the shoulders and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I was just to the left. So when you guys were going, he's wide open. <laughs> he wasn't wide open for me. I went, no, he's not. <laughs> and well, then, I, then I moved to the left to try and get that angle. And that's right when he started to take off. And I got him one. And You did very well. Thank goodness for swift ammunition, man. <laughs> it's just, what an incredible old bull. Look at this. Those bosses are something else, huh? All beautiful, worn beautiful. Off and, rubbed up and great sweep and width. This is a dynamite bull. You know, Zimbabwe's still got great hunting. It's, it's great to come back here after all these years and see that the wildlife is still in great shape. Tremendous bulls like this. I mean, this shows you the kind of quality you can get right here. Unbelievable. So let's all take a guess before the trackers take off to go find the truck. <laughs> Which way is the truck? You point to where you think the truck is. On three. One, two, three. No, 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 no. It's, it's that way. <laughs> That's why we have trackers. Local knowledge is the key around here. Thanks to ethical hunting and sustainable use conservation, Zimbabwe's wildlife is thriving. 
and it's an honor getting to be a small part of these tried and true practices that are protecting African wildlife for future generations to come.